grateful to be here with us. And I'll be moderating, but this is an Oak Grove Women's Missionary Society event. So I'm gonna turn it over to the president, Katrina Dunnigan. Good morning, everyone. Um, our worship leader um, is not on yet. So I'm just gonna open us up with a word of prayer. Lord God, we just thank you for this beautiful day, Lord God. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. We thank you for all your marvelous blessings, all your marvelous works, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you be in the midst of this event, Lord God, that you would just bless, Lord God, that you would just encourage, Lord God, and that you would just let those who are attending here, Lord God, be doubly blessed, Lord God, and let them receive, Lord God, from you and from what they need, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for another glorious year. And we celebrate you, Lord God, this day and each day. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 So good morning again. Um, I'm going to bring the welcome and then our pastor will bring greetings. So uh, good morning to everyone. I am Katrina Dunnigan the president of the Nancy Marsh Women's Missionary Society here at Oak Grove African Methodist Episcopal Church. On behalf of our society and Oak Grove, I greet you all with a hearty hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. We count it a privilege to sponsor this God-inspired event that supports our mission statement, which is, we are called to strengthen our faith and sent to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ by service, by service, by service and witness in the world. And surely this esteemed panel of God's beautiful, blessed women and all of you here today is a testament to this mandate. Our focus is always to help eradicate poverty, illiteracy and violence against women and children by empowering, enriching, educating, equipping and encouraging women and children, specifically those of African descent and primarily those of color. I want to thank our pastor, Reverend Cindy Rudolph, our executive minister, Reverend Andre Spivey, our uh, church administrator, Jackie Lawson, our pastor's executive assistant, Gwen Montgomery, who are my fellow workers, and also my uh, fellow sister in kingdom work, Lori Lewis. I also wanna thank my beautiful daughters of service, Kim and Antonia, and also the most wonderful, supportive, hardworking missionaries that exist, the officers and members of the Nancy Marsh Women's Missionary Society, the 4th District and Michigan Conference WMS and our Oak Grove family and friends. If anyone is interested in learning more about our organization of ministry and service, please email us at wms at oakgroveame.org and we will put that in the chat. And from there, we will forward you our monthly newsletter and informational pamphlet that highlights the many community service projects and mission outwork, outreach work we do. May God bless you this morning and in all your endeavors, enjoy and again, welcome. Thank you, Katrina. And I will have words and welcome from our senior pastor, Cindy Rudolph. Good morning, good morning and praise the Lord. Am I muted? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord and welcome. I give God praise for each and every one of you. I want to thank God for Sister Katrina Dunnigan, our WMS president, for all of the missionaries and the wonderful work that you do. I certainly thank God for Sister Lori Lewis, our moderator, and for each and every one of these amazing panelists, uh, female entrepreneurs who have distinguished themselves in amazing ways. And we thank God for our viewing audience as well. I greet you on behalf of Oak Grove AME Church. And we thank God for this wonderful work that our missionaries are doing. We thank God for these panelists who are going to come and share and, and uh, serve as an excellent example of how to serve and how to be a well-rounded uh, woman and how to stand in service for the community and in service to God. And we just thank and praise God for this day and for this opportunity. And now I'm going to turn it back over to our wonderful moderator, Sister Lori Lewis. God bless you all and God keep you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Lori Lewis, and I'm just excited um, not only to just be moderating, but to be in the presence of all these wonderful entrepreneurs that 
represent a plethora of industries. And so what I wanna do just briefly is just absolutely give um, a little brief introduction of each of our panelists. And then I'm gonna have each of the panelists kind of give their two minute elevator speech specifically about what it is that they do in the industries that they serve. So I'm actually going to um, share my screen for one second and give you their overview. Sorry, thought I already had it ready. Yep, here we go. All right. Thank God for Zoom, right? And thank God I use Zoom every day so I know how to quickly <laughs> come back to it. So, um, and this is in alphabetical order, so it's not like it's in any particular order other than it's just an alphabetical order by last name. So our first panelist is Amelia Mimi Brown, who is CEO and global speaker of Amp Up Success. She's a coach. She's a motivational speaker. She's a leadership trainer. She regular, regularly appears on Live in the D. So she's gonna give you more about what else she does in a few minutes. Welcome, Mimi Brown. And then we have Zeta Cole, who is the owner of Stitchworks Embroidery that's in Berkeley, Michigan. Um, Zeta has been in business since 1995. I just found this out. So this is her 26th year in business. She actually started her business out of her home. Um, she works with schools, community groups, and with Oak Grove. And I'll let her go into more detail in a minute. Our next panelist is Christia Donaldson, who is the CEO and founder of Thank God It's Natural, TGIN. And if you don't recognize the full name, you should recognize the TGIN because her products are currently sold at Ulta, Target, CVS, Whole Foods, Sally's Beauty, Walmart, and Walgreens. And I'll let her go into more detail. So we're just glad that she was able to join us. Um, our next panelist is Kim Gathers, the daughter of our own Katrina Dunnigan. She is the owner, along with her husband, of AK Gathers, and they own uh, barbershops throughout the Phoenix, Arizona area. So thank you for joining us. I know you're on a different time zone than us, but we thank you for being here. And then we have our own Dr. Barbara Hannah Kearns, or we affectionately call her Dr. Bobby. Um, and she is the owner of the Women's Center and Healthcare Physicians. So thank you for being with us today. And we have Gennaro Lott, who is the owner of the OC Lash Loft. And I'm not sure what time it is. It's probably, she's three hours behind us, but we're glad she made it. Gennaro, thank you for logging in um, and joining us today. Um, Gennaro left her corporate job to start the OC Lash Loft in 2015. So she's a certified esthetician and she's gonna give us more about her ownership in a little bit. And then we have Nadanya Muslim, who is the owner of Tantas Cosmetics Beauty Bar. I just recently found out that her business is actually in Oak Grove's um, shopping center, if you will. So Nadanya is an educator, um, but she stepped out in faith on in January of 2017 to open this beauty bar so females can have this personalized cosmetic shopping experience. So thank you for being with us. And then we have Brittany Ingram Stampley and I added the Ingram because Brittany is a baby of Oak Grove. She is now the owner of Just Blossom Studio. Um, she started out with doing Just Blossom conferences but she stepped out in, on faith last summer and opened Just Blossom Studio, which um, is in Livonia, Michigan. And it is established or built upon four pil pillars of engagement, faith, fashion, fitness, and finances. But I'll let her go into more detail about that in a little bit. And then finally, last but not least, our own Carla Walker Miller, who is the CEO of Walker Miller Energy Services. Um, she is the first Black Detroit-based distributor handling a complete line of major electrical equipment. Um, her doors in Detroit opened in July of 2000 as a full-line distributor for ABB Power T&D Company. And again, welcome to you, Carla. So that is just a brief overview, brief and quick, because I <clears throat> wanted to use all of our time for the questions and discussions and conversation that we're gonna have. Um, I would like to ask each of you, just for those who are watching, 
like I said, I just wanted to give a brief overview, but if we could just have each of you maybe in two minutes or less, just give just a, a quick synopsis, if you will, of your business and what it is that you actually do as an entrepreneur. So in no particular, in no particular order, or are you ready, Dr. Bobby, you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and Good thank morning. you so much for this opportunity. I have been a member of Oak Grove AME Church since 1991. I moved here from, um, from Indianapolis, actually, where I was born, and I was just wondering, am I going to be able to find a church as nice as my church in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. which is Allen Chapel AME Church? And I have. I found my home, and I'm happy to be here. I am an OB-GYN physician. My business is Women's Center Healthcare Physicians in Lincoln Park. And I focus on general OB-GYN, delivering lots of babies and doing lots of surgeries. And I most recently have expanded my business and have grown to add some additional providers. So there are actually four um, providers, ob -GYN providers in my office. And that has truly been a blessing. I'll talk a little bit more about that and how COVID has, has affected that. Um, and again, I practice general ob -GYN, but my passion is for the 50 plus year old woman, the aging woman as she approaches menopause. And I want her to make that a dynamic and graceful and confident part of her life. So I focus primarily on that. Awesome. And I'm happy Thank to be you. here. Happy to have you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> How about you, Brittany? <laughs> so formerly as Brittany Ingram, I grew up in Old Grove, was at Old Grove seven days a week as a child from Doves to YPD to Bible study, choir rehearsal for Sunbeams, liturgical dance, you name it, um, I was in it. So um, something that kind of got me to start Just Blossom was actually Reverend Jessica. She used to have women's convocations. And I used to say as a child, like, I'm going to have that when I get older. I'm going to do those as I get older. Um, so I started Just Blossom at, because I'm not a person that voices things that I go through or anything like that. So I wanted to start a movement that I can show people what I've been through without actually saying it. So it's based off of faith, fitness, finance, and fashion. I started out with just doing conferences or you know, just little tidbit things like cupcakes and chatter. We'll do hygiene drives, different things like that. Last summer, I just kind of stepped out on faith and said, I want a women's one-stop shop. I want where a woman can come. If you want to have your bridal shower, if you want to come to our mentoring programs, if you need help with your finances, whatever it is, we have it. Um, I, so I opened it up in July and I am open in Livonia on Seven Mile and Inkster. Awesome. Zeta, you wanna go next? Yes, I can go. Uh, I think I'm okay, I'm unmuted. So I started, um, as Lori said, I started the business in 1995 and um, it really came about, I've always given personal gifts, but it really came about um, having been an athlete and a coach um, that's where I kind of uh, initially realized that there was a need for this service um, because everything that we received was either screen printed or embroidered. And when I finished um, my master's in 95, I went back to my old high school and actually they were my first customers, Oak Park High School. So I initially started off doing um, sports teams and then uh, the company evolved into uh, corporate and with the corporate came um, adding the uh, the additional service of promotional products so because we wanted to be that one stop shop. So if you needed to have, you know, whether it's your corporate apparel, anything that, that you wanted to do to promote um, uh, your staff, um, we wanted to, you to be able to come directly to us. So we've kind of evolved. We've come, like I said, you know, we started off in the basement and um, actually at my mother's home. Um, and, and then we evolved and now we are located in Berkeley now going into our 26th year. Awesome. Gennaro. Hey, Gennaro. Hey, good morning. <laughs> good morning. I'm excited to be here. Okay. So like, as Lori was saying, I started the OC Lash Law in 2015. 
um, once I moved to California. So that was four years after I had moved to California. And basically I started it because I felt like there weren't um, any real luxury eyelash extension salon. So that's what we do. We do eyelash extension services, um, waxing, facials, like a lot of beauty makeup. And at the time there weren't a lot of like luxury salons in the in my area. And so that's what I wanted to provide. And so that's when I started the OC Lash Law. Yes. Yeah. Chris, Christia. Um, thank you again for having me here with you, Oak Grove. It's a blessing to come home um, and do this. This is great. Uh, I started Thank God It's Natural in 2009, um, but was working on it since 2006. And my story is a simple one. Um, when I graduated from law school, I went to work at a very, um, I don't know, prestigious law firm here in Chicago. And at the time, this was around 2003, there were very few examples of women who wore their natural hair. In fact, most of the messaging I received around looking professional in the workplace involved getting a relaxer or straightening my hair. And so it was this kind of white beauty standard that women, particularly black women, were forced to conform to in order to believe that they had an opportunity to, you know, rise or advance in the workplace. And at the end, at, on this first job, because I was transitioning to natural hair, I wore a wig, um, you know, to basically camouflage my kinky curly tresses. And at the end of the first year of that job, my boss basically told me I did not have what it took to be successful at that law firm. And so for me, that inspired me to go out and, you know, create products and tell this story about why should we have to compromise who we are in order to be successful. And the problem that existed for me existed for a lot of other Black women. And so the rest, um, like I said, long story short, uh, the rest is pretty much history. We launched products and the internet and grassroots community took off. And from there, we've been, like you said, able to get into, you know, Target and Ulta and all these other stores. Awesome. All right, Kim. Good morning, everyone. I too, it is an honor to be here and to come home, to be at home. Um, I'm also a former member of Oak Grove until I relocated to Phoenix in 2006 and a member, former member of the Nancy Marsh Missionary Society. Um, so AK Gathers Inc. is an Arizona-based corporation. It is minority and women small business. Um, our primary business is barbershop and commercial property. Um, we have been serving the Valley uh, in barbering since 1996. Um, and I like to say that we are more than a barbershop, we are a community resource. Um, so um, we pride ourselves on bringing the resources to our communities and serving our communities as well as um, the other things that we do. Um, so again, thank you all for having me and I look forward to this day. Thank you. Mimi Brown. Hey there, Lori Lewis. <laughs> so Oprah said for every one of us that succeeds, it's because that someone was there to show you the way out. And I had a mentor that did that for me and uplifted and supported me. And I was, I remember I was 16 years old. Actually, I was 19 years old. I was running a camera for a TV station and I saw this motivational speaker and I said to him, that is what I want to do. And uh, several, many, many, many years later through trial and error, I was able to step into that uh, vision that I had for myself. And so I work with organizations to help them amplify their communication skills so they can make an influential impact on the world. And I do that through keynotes, trainings. I'm an author of three books. And then I also work with women entrepreneurs, specifically women of color, to help them amplify their message and do what I call own their swag. So they put their distinctive competitive advantage out there in the world. Yes, my Mimi. Carla? <laughs> Hi, it's Hi. great to be here. And uh, so I, have, I was a member of Oak Grove like for forever. I, my kids are 25 and 30. I have three kids and I actually taught Sunday school at Oak Grove when they were young. So uh, I still, it's, it's still an amazing place. But uh, I started my business 20 years ago, as Lori said, in 
uh, large power equipment. I'm an engineer by trade. But in um, around 2010, I pivoted. I went from uh, $10 million in revenue to zero to actually debt during the recession. And we reinvented ourselves as an energy efficiency services company. So no matter where you guys live, there are someone, they're running, the utilities run commercials on TV that say, if you wanna save energy and save money, call us. For the most part, the utilities don't do that work. They call contractors like me and we go into your home or your business and say, uh, we will install free LED light bulbs, free thermostats, and we will educate you about how to save energy and save money in your home. And those, um, those are like rate payer finance. They're actually on your bill. So I wanna encourage everybody first to take advantage <laughs> of the free um, direct install energy saving measures that you can get from your local utility. And the second thing I wanna encourage everyone to do is explore uh, careers and opportunities in energy and sustainability because black people are woefully underrepresented and no matter what you do, there's really an energy play. I mean, I'm just listening. Uh, there's a, a doctor, there's a, an embroidery company. Utilities use a lot of branded gear. And the other thing is, even if you are creating a product, if you can play up the sustainability angle. So I don't have to tell you guys who I am. And because I am older than most of you, and by nature, I like to help people. So I think that younger women shouldn't have to go through what older women went through to have any modicum of success. And I think it's so important that we do what we can do to have intergenerational conversations so that you don't have to make the same mistakes so that your way is easier uh, than the way we had. Black women are having a moment and it's so important that we push through as hard as we can and as fast as we can together right now to take full advantage of this. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, Nadania, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. There you are. All right, would you give us just a, a brief spiel of what you do at the Tauntas Cosmetics Beauty Bar? Can you see me? Cause I can see you. Uh... Nope, um, I'm going to hit ask to start video and then you should get a button where you can uh, appear. There you are, okay. hi there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi. Good morning. Good morning, I am so excited to be here um, and to listen to everyone's journey is inspiring to me. Um, my journey actually started in high school. Um, constantly um, being called ugly by my peers. My parents put me in Barbizon. You know, so many people went to Barbizon. Mm -hmm. And um, I started taking little eyeshadow. I would buy little eyeshadows and I would put my name on it and I would sell it to my friends. Y'all need this eyeshadow. <laughs> so I have been trying to sell makeup practically all my life. Um, wanted to be a, a theatrical makeup artist. So dabbled in that a little bit in school and went off into my field of education, but um, always buying everybody's lip, lip gloss. And um, so out of the mouths of children, my daughter actually was just kind of telling me, you know, uh, mom, you have over 200 bottles of lip gloss. You just need to have your own lip gloss company. And you know, you need to mind your business. Well, I'm just saying. And I actually saw that little light bulb, you know, like I, I'm smart, I could research this, I can do this. And um, uh, it took me about two years of, you know, writing everybody's ingredients off of their bottles and what does this mean and so on. And uh, I uh, started my line in 2017. A month later, um, I was just blessed in the right place at the right time and asked to sell my lip gloss at Ashley Stewart on Southfield Road. Like, hmm. <laughs> and um, from then, someone at Macy's tried my lip gloss and was looking for me. And they said they had a grassroots program. Some of you may have been there. It was the uh, Macy's Marketplace. And then they sent me to two other stores. They were so impressed that the people of Detroit came out to support me in such numbers. They sent me to two other stores. 
And then everyone just kept saying, nobody is too far. You need to be in the city. And um, then I was blessed with this piece of uh, property to rent on uh, the Avenue of Fashion, historic. Yes. yes. And, uh, and so here I am. <laughs> awesome. Well, again, thank you all for joining. And for those watching, you can see that we have just a range of industries and ages and that was what was so important when we were putting this together, Katrina and I, is to make sure we had different representation from different industries. And Carla, you gave a great introduction in the fact that no one should be struggling becoming an entrepreneur. And so I'm going to just start the conversation off with just where we've been in this pandemic a year. Um, what have been some of the struggles, if you will, and maybe some have not had struggles, but what are some of the struggles that you've experienced in the pandemic. I know, Brittany, you opened your business during the pandemic. And so did it help that we were in a pandemic or what are some, and anybody can start, I won't call on anybody in particular, but who would like to just start that conversation? I can join, I can go ahead. Okay. Hi, how are you? Um, so um, I would say that if anything that came out of this, um, it, of course, it's not the circumstances that I would have uh, wanted, but it allowed me to finally push pause because um, like most of us, we are on autopilot and we never take the time to just um, to stop. And even with a wonderful support system at home, I found myself never turning it off. And when we had to shut down, it forced me to just be still. And um, that was extremely difficult for me because I'm so used to constantly moving um, constantly checking emails, you know, my customer was like, oh, I got an email back. It was five o'clock in the morning. And it just made me just stop and realize one, how important it is just to take care of not only your physical health, but your mental health. Um, and it also made me, you know, help me to understand that, you know, all the things that I was worrying about, or, you know, um, up at night thinking about for the next day, that those things are still going to be there, you know? So it just really, you know, allowed me the time to just stop and just say, you know what, it's going to be, you know, it's okay to, to just not be constantly moving. Like I haven't perfected it. So I can, I can definitely say that, you know, so I still do it, but it's just not as much, you know? So I think that if, if anything that came out of it, it just allowed me to take that time to just to step back and say, it's okay not to have your mind going 24 seven, you know? So mm -hmm. I would say that that would be one of the, the positives that came out of it for me. I'll go next. So I, I have, uh, I had just the opposite experience because we have 115 team members in four states and the stress of trying to figure out how to continue to pay our team. Number one, you know, first is keep everyone has to stay alive. Right. But number two, um, everyone needed their money. And that was before PPP loans. That was before we knew anything that we know now. So the pressure of literally trying to allow my team to maintain their livelihoods was, uh, was huge. And for three months, we had weekly meetings. And I told the team every week whether we were going to be able to continue to pay them again uh, that week when we were bringing in nearly zero revenues. And we managed to do that for about... Um, about eight weeks before our PPP loans came in. And I said, okay, we're good. We can ride this out. But the other thing, the other shift that we made though, is we leaned into managing through humanity. You know, business just wasn't even the issue at that point. You all can be paid and we have to figure everything out else out. So we really are a, a closer team. We're more focused on taking care of each other out of uh, my team members, so many of them have lost people. Some of them have lost multiple people and it, it's been a bonding experience. And we actually have started up in most of the states that we're in and are back in homes and are going, our, our 2020 revenue was actually higher because we had to figure out, you know, how to make things work that we never done before, but we wow. were able to charge for them. So it's been a, a traumatizing, disorienting, year but uh but we've been blessed wow go ahead and Lori, I'll go. um sure. and and so our business that we're in um the barber business is a cash business mm -hmm. um and our barbers are independent contractors so it was it it was and it still is very challenging 
Um, we had 20 barbers before the pandemic hit. We are, we have less than half of that. Um, and in our business, PPP, the PPP loan didn't, we didn't qualify for that. So when our barbers don't, obviously they can't make money. And when we were down, then that means we don't get any, right? And so then also we have tenants in our commercial property and they were struggling as well. Um, so for us, it was trying to, the things that we have been um, trying to bring and resources to our teams prior to the pandemic in terms of, you know, having a plan, right? You're a cash business. Um, um, we started to see that they, they started to get that. Obviously they're in, you know, we're in dire straits. And so um, for us, it was really, um, we started, we also started having weekly meetings, which is not normally, you know, normal in the barber world, but to consistently and constantly check the mental health of mm -hmm. them because yes. um, they, they were, they were a cash business. That's what they depended on. And so some of them, um, of course, you know, continue to, when we were shut down, they worked out of their homes, mm -hmm. right? Um, just to make ends meet. So um, for us in our industry, it really kind of brought light, I think also, to society as to what the barber and beauty biz business, the industry is, right? And uh, what typically how we operate and we don't qualify for the normal unemployment. Um, so that, that was the good thing is that I think there, there an awareness came about to, you know, politicians and, and, and other agencies that, you know, would otherwise discount and, and they would not qualify for services. I'm just wondering, Janero, if your experience would be similar to Kim, since you're sort of in the same industry, right? Personal yeah. care. Yeah, definitely. Um, not the same experience, just because for her, she has independent contractors and I had employees. So mm -hmm. luckily, all of my employees were able to get unemployment, um, but we were shut down for five months, and that's a, a very long time. Um, but I can say that it did allow me, and one of the panelists was saying, it allowed me to slow down. I think as women entrepreneurs, we're always go, go, going and trying to figure out, you know, different ideas for our business, different ways to sustain business. And so it allowed me to kind of just be, be at peace and be quiet and try to figure out, you know, what does my business, what do I want my business to look like in the next five years? So we were good in that. And then also we were able to manage because the city that my business is in is in Irvine. And so they had a lot of different grant opportunities um, and then um, the Small Business Association and different avenues like that so that we were able to, you know, continue to stay in business. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nadani, I think you've had your hand up for a minute. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the pandemic, um, it really hit us hard because, as you know, um, we sell lip gloss. And so we don't have any employees. We're all educators. Um, and everyone who works here with me, and, but we all volunteer. We don't pay ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. So we couldn't get any grants. And all they were that basically we were qualifying were for loans and we didn't want loans. So, you know, we, you know, made sure that, um, you know, that we donated, we hustled hard so that we could, you know, have our rent paid and insurance <laughs> and things like that. But I mean, really no one was buying lip gloss and that's what we were based off of. And so we had to, you know, reinvent ourselves. And, um, you know, I came out with, I say this, it was all about the lips, but now it's all about the eyes. <laughs> so I, you know, I came out with a, um, a eyeshadow palette um, that sold well, but you know, it still didn't do what we needed it to do to, to sustain. And um, basically we just had to reinvent ourselves, you know, Come up with what do we like? What what messages do we want to send out there to just keep ourselves alive? Um, to one of our our goals before was not to kind of base our business on our friends, and so I would try to separate 
my uh, store posts from my personal posts. Mm -hmm. But I realized that um, my friends were really my base and their friends. So I I had to say, okay, can y'all post and share? Can y'all share this? Um, And uh, myself and uh, my... um, my uh, major partner, volunteer, BFF, we both <laughs> went to HBCUs and we're both assistant principals. And so we said, this is the time to start exposing HBCUs. So we made HBCU mask and sorority mask. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in uh, opposite sororities, but it's the same <laughs> thing of sisterhood. And so we just really had to just totally reinvent ourselves and now we're coming to the place that um we can say okay let's go you know lean back into the makeup let's wear a little makeup a little more often with the you know since we've been back so yeah you put a shield on now i still see your makeup right <laughs> so um yeah it was very very hard for us because we didn't have any employees, so we we just weren't qualified for anything. But we survivors, we right? Here. And 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 you bring up a good point, which I was going to bring up next um, too. Is that many of you have said you had to step back and you know slow down and review your practices and your systems, and some of you had to pivot. You know, so what are some of those practices? Cause now that we're slowly easing back into society and things are opening up a little more, what are some of those best practices that other entrepreneurs need to, you know, cause there's some entrepreneurs that never stopped. You know, I, as a wedding coordinator, I never stopped. So the pandemic really didn't and hasn't affected me. I've just gone to just smaller wedding gatherings now, right? Um, but so because I haven't really been able to slow down, what are some of those practices that you've been able to reflect on that others can can implement? So what I would like to say is that um, for me, and I did on what Zeta and uh, Gennaro said, the, when the pandemic initially hit, um, it was a time that forced us just to sit back, be quiet and to reflect. So then as that was going on and at the outset, the hospital canceled elective surgeries. So the number of GYN surgeries, the caseload went down, yet women were still having babies. (laughs) So they had to be seen. So my office stayed open, but instead of being in the office five days a week, I cut it down to two or three days a week just to accommodate um, the less volume. Yes. But now things have started to increase, but probably my biggest win, and I don't wanna leave this Zoom meeting without saying this, was in February of 20, I applied for a loan with Citizens Bank, just a routine business loan. And I'd had this bank account, I had a bank account with them for quite a few years but they turned me down and I was requesting $50,000. And so for a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks, I was a little despondent. Like, why did they turn me down? I paid my bills on time, so forth and so on. And again, that was $50,000. Fast forward to April when the PPP was made available. And so I applied and my accountant and I sat down and crunched the numbers. And she said, you're eligible for over $48,000, which is pretty close to 50. Mm -hmm. And long story short, God just worked that out. And I got that $48,000, but it wasn't a loan. That was a grant. Wow. That was a grant. And I was able to spend every dime the way I was supposed to spend it for salaries and rent and bringing employees back. So that will, for the rest of my life, be a testimony. Amen. What a blessing. Yeah. Okay, Mimi, your hand was up. And then Christia, then Brittany, go ahead. 
So for me, it was about re like thinking about how to re-inventory my talents. And as a motivational speaker, if we not meeting in person, I'm not getting on, I'm not getting on anybody's stages and I'm not working. And so I had to, and I love how Carla said, like we had to get, um, just get kind of thoughtful about things. And even Zeta said, get, get still. And when I started re-inventorying my skills, I was like, oh, well, I've done speaking, but I've also done it in a virtual component. So I stepped in my virtual game, learned how to use Zoom better. I learned about other virtual platforms and just started sharing that with people. The other thing that I did that made a difference is just a connection point. So building rapport, I was just checking in with people. How's it going? What do you have? You know, how can I be of service? And it wasn't even about me selling anything to them, but just letting them know, hey, I was thinking about you. And it was a great way for me to do client check-ins. And many of those clients will call me back later and go, hey, um, I know you mentioned X, Y, and Z. Now I have the space for that. But I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't reaching out with the intention of trying to get business. I just was being human and connecting with folks um, and being a resource for them, even outside of the work that I did. So if I knew about the PPP loans, if I knew about like the um, Oakland County had grants where they were giving up to $10,000 away and I shared that with several of my other clients, but doing those check-ins and people remember that. And to your point, Nadanya, you're, um, as much as we don't think about it, like our friends are sometimes our biggest supporters and also our customers. So tap into those folks. And it made, it made a huge uh, impact for me. So, so for, us, um, for, for us, when the pandemic first hit, it was a very scary time, very much a lot of uncertainty. We do business with a lot of big box retailers that typically pay with in 30 days, but people were shifting their payment terms out to 60 and 90 days. And not only that, some of our retailers um, canceled purchase orders, very large purchase orders um, with no type of recourse or explanation of if or when they would be opening again. Um, so it took a lot of faith to kind of make it through this time. Like many of the ladies have said, the PPP was very instrumental in our ability to survive. So that was kind of the negative. But as Mimi mentioned, this was also a great time for us to network. Many of our buyers at stores like Ulta, Target, or Walmart, we get like one meeting with them a year. And this was an opportunity when everybody was working from home, where we had the opportunity to hop on calls, talk about the business, maybe get 30 minutes of their time, which it does not sound like a lot. But when you're talking about, you know, a space that's very crowded and very competitive, 30 minutes is huge for me. It was also a time for us to connect with our customers on a deeper level. Instead of focusing so much on selling to them, we were more focused on just kind of being there in a supportive fashion. Many people have mentioned mental health and that people were, you know, sometimes feeling disconnected. And so we kind of shifted our marketing strategy of one of selling shampoo and conditioner to really just kind of being, you know, a friend or your pal uh, on social media. So, mm. Brittany. Um, so for me, of course, like I never sat still. And if I <laughs> didn't have something to do, I'm going to find something to do. Um, so when we got shut down, like I'm at home, my daughter's at home, my husband at home, everyone's at home. So that's what kind of made me sit down. Um, my uncle told me like, oh, you have all these great ideas, but you need to sit down and you need to park and lot your ideas. He said, you know, get out a sheet of paper and you need to put all the ideas that you have and put them on that paper. So that's what made me realize, okay, well, this is what I want to do. So let me go ahead and just step out on faith and do it. The pandemic for me was actually a blessing because a lot of resources that aren't out in the open were out. So when I, I jumped on every single one as from the 401k to loans, to grants, um, Oakland County, Wayne County, anything that was out there, I don't care if I feel like I qualify or not, I'm gonna apply for it and I'm just gonna see what happens and whatever happens, happens. Um, so when I started, some of the processes I had in place were not going well. They, you know, it was like, okay, you're not making enough money here, or this is not going well, this contract is not well, so you need to look into other things. I know for me, um, with the small business, HoneyBook is something that was really, really mm -hmm. good for me. Honeybit, HoneyBook, it creates templates for you as far as like your contracts, invoices, 
emails it does the follow-up for you you don't have to do it it's automated and it was only like two dollars a month it was like a special that they were having where it was two dollars a month Mm -hmm. instead of at first I was I had my gmail account where I had to go here I had paypal where I was doing invoices I had my phone where I'm replying to text messages versus in honeybook everything was all together and it is divided into different people so I have one project that might be John Doe all of John Doe invoices emails um vendors anything that you can think of is in John Doe so all of the small businesses um especially rather you're doing decorating if you have a venue I would say look into HoneyBook because that is something that has really changed my mm-hmm. life yeah I'm a HoneyBook user as well so let's let's channel into that as far as what are some resources that are available because you have a lot of You'd be surprised on social media how many are looking to start a business. They have these ideas that they've written down in, but they're apprehensive about starting. So what's some recommendations that you would have for someone who's really looking to jumpstart their business right now? I'll just, uh, go ahead. Mm-hmm. there are just more resources out there than there ever have been for yes. um, starting small businesses. And I'm, I'm the executive committee chair of this entity called Detroit Means Business. And it's Detroit's response basically to the pandemic and everything from free PP, PPE when it was not available during the first startup to resources for starting businesses. They try to collect all the information they can find on grants. Um, the PPP is still available through the end of May, that has been extended for anyone who only got their first tranche, who didn't get the first tranche, or who participated in the first and didn't get the second. Most people do qualify because they've changed the rules. So I urge you all to please look into the PPP, even if you didn't before. But it's uh, DetroitMeansBusiness.org has a wealth of, uh, of resources, whether you are in Detroit or not. Outstanding. Kim, I think your hand's up. Yes. So I would say, um, again, to piggyback what Carla said, um, there is a wealth of resources, but there's a wealth of federal resources being poured into the communities to um, less just, you know, the elephant in the room is to the Black communities, right? Everybody says they want to help us. Um, And so this is the time. Um, businesses have been born in the pandemic because of that. Um, And so just like Brittany said, right, you have a dream, you have, um, write your plan down, and there are um, all these CFDIs that they have been given money for women in business um, to help women start their business, to help women um, expand their businesses. So I would definitely here in Phoenix, Phoenix is, has been given a lot of money, right? And so I think, um, again, tap into those resources and those, because the local organizations, that's where the, the help and the support is, right? They're closest to the people. Um, and so I, I definitely uh, would say tap into that um, because it, it is out there. And, and obviously we, in, in the black community, a lot of things we don't know about because nobody shares them with us. Um, but now more than ever, I think they're trying to, everybody is trying to put that out there. Kim, um, CFDIs, what does that stand for? So those are community development fund corporations. Um, they are used, they are nonprofits, um, and they are organizations that federal funding, um, such as SBA, they, they funnel money through to them because they are the ones who are implementing the programs locally. Okay, thank you. And let me also just interject um, for those who are watching and you have questions for the panelists, you can use the chat or the Q&A button and we will get to your questions in just a little bit. Go ahead, Mimi. Um, One of the easiest things for you to do is if you have a business idea and you're not even quite sure about how it's all gonna manifest, go ahead and at least start, like go get a DBA, go get an LLC, get the paperwork done. Because what I found for a lot of folks during the pandemic, they weren't able to qualify for PPP or they weren't able to qualify for EDIL because they didn't have the structure of a, of a real business. 
and you can start it up, you can do PayPal, but go get the business structure. Even if it's just um, an LLC to start, it'll cost you 50 bucks in the state of Michigan, but it gives you the foundation so that you can apply for these other things when they come available. Um, so get, as one of my coaches used to say, stop getting ready to get ready and just start, just do it. Uh, Christia? I would also um, highlight, we've talked a lot about the PPP loan, the EIDL loan from the SBA. I just applied for that. They just raised um, the amounts available for um, borrowing up to a half a million dollars. And the application is so simple. It's literally like three pages of you putting in your contact information. And the only thing they ask about your business is what type of business is it? and how much you made and what your cost of goods sold were. And this is, like I said, I just applied for it this week, but I know several of my business colleagues that applied for it previously and the money just showed up in their bank account. And unlike the PPP, um, it's not a grant, it's a loan, but it's such a low interest loan. It's like at 3.75% payable over 30 years. So you can use it for working capital. It doesn't have the same restrictions that PPP did. And then I would just say a piece of advice that the pandemic taught me was, you know, people always talk about paying your taxes. Well, that means for me, like, and, and having savings. So I always thought about paying my taxes as a business thing and the savings thing is having my personal savings, you know, six months. But the pandemic really highlighted the importance of having business cash reserves. So mm -hmm. after the pandemic hit, I set up four bank accounts, um, one for operating, one for taxes, one for savings and one for our foundation kind of thing. And I started aggressively just saving in case anything else happened again, in case they didn't do any more PPP, in case the pandemic lasted longer than what we thought. But before I was running my business, putting the cash, you know, back towards inventory and purchases. But now I'm making sure I'm putting money aside more so for a rainy day. And you said that was an EIDL loan? Yeah. Economic okay. impact disaster loan. And okay. before it seemed like it was like kind of those hurricane relief loans when it first came out. But no, it's just like if your business has been impacted in any way um, by the pandemic and there's no requirement of drop in revenues by a certain percentage as well. Yeah. Can I piggyback off that too? So even sure. if you received it the first go around, they just reopened it again and they're making it available to people. So you can give an additional... Uh, funding as well. So check out your email if you did it the first time because you can get it the second time. Yeah, and I, I feel obligated to weigh in again here because I've personally, I probably have 25 people that I've convinced to apply for PPP. And I, what I want to say is don't say no to yourself. Don't listen to your friends saying you don't qualify because you're a sole proprietor. You don't qualify because you don't have QuickBooks. You don't qualify because you don't have enough employees. Those things are not true please look at the rules for PPP. And someone says, well, I only get $2,500 because I'm like, okay, so is that $2,500 more than you had before, number one? <laughs> number two, if you use it properly, it becomes a grant, not a loan. And number three, if you, lose, if you use it improperly, say, so say you just blow it, you pay a 1% interest rate. 1% interest rate is free money because most loans, you pay more than 1% just to originate the loan. So even if you don't use it the way you're supposed to do to, you are going to pay 1% on that loan. So mm -hmm. please don't say no to yourself on the PPP. Please look at, at it. Please, even if you apply, if you get a no, you can actually go back to the bank and say, why did I get the no? What do I need to do to move this to a yes? And some, and Decisions have been reversed. So please don't just don't say no on the PPP unless you've really explored it for yourself. And I would like to say uh, to anyone who's starting a business, make sure that you get yourself a tribe, mm -hmm. a tribe of people who are in your space, who believe in you, who believe in what you're doing and who can support and, and be there for you. Yes. I agree. Can I chip in? I agree with Dr. Barbara. Be friends also like your tribe and be friends with also other entrepreneurs. They don't have to necessarily be in the same industry as you, 
But as business owners, there are a lot of things that we do have in common. And especially during the pandemic, I was able to reach out to other business owners, even about loans or grant opportunities that I may not have known about. Um, so that's a good thing. And then I'm piggybacking and I don't remember who exactly said it, but write it down for women that want to start a business. Um, and when you write it down, make it specific. Talk about how you want your business to look, the goals for your business, what your target market is, the amount of revenue you want to generate, just your wildest dreams and write it down. And then you can put it away and look at it every once in a while. But um, I think that that's great. And then consistency. Stay abreast of all the trends and everything in your market or in your industry. Um, yeah. Then follow people online that are in the same industry that you're also in. Yes. Um, I know okay. Brittany's been trying to jump in. Yep. Okay. And then. So um, <laughs> I know someone has said like to just start. Um, and you should just start with me. I know for a while, because I started just blossoming in 2014, I wasn't consistent. Um, I always waited on the next best thing. So I said, well, I'll wait until I have a, a better following or I'll wait until I have more money or I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. But then years kept going by and I was just continuing to wait. So it was like, you just need to just at least start. And then also once you start, you'll notice that you'll start adding things in. So like when I first started, it was just, oh, I'm going to have a workout class or, oh, I'm going to offer this space, you know, out for, you know, if you want to have a baby shower or, oh, I might have a mentoring program, but each month it seems like I'm offering something different. Mm -hmm. um, or, and I'm finding more passions. Like now I do uh, event planning. I wasn't doing that before. Now it's like, oh, okay. I can offer linen to your package. Now I can offer this. It's just different things that keep coming all of this was not set in place when I first opened up the doors. It was just like, hey, I have the key. I have a little bit of plan. And then <laughs> that's it. So I, do, I would definitely say like, at least do get started and to tap into those resources as far as like the different people that you may have. There's a girl who is literally one mile up from me. And when I first started, I didn't have any tables. So I would call her and say, hey, if you don't have an event today, can I borrow your tables? Now it's to the point where she's calling me because she needs tables as well. So it's like, it's just, it's good to, to, to get that good rapport with other people because you never know when you'll need someone else that's in the same that as you. Yes. Zeta? Um, I would just say that, um, like, like uh, some of the panelists were saying that um, everyone should just, you know, of course, you know, write down what your goals and your aspirations are and everyone's um, definition of success is different. But for me, I would just truly say that you don't want to equate making money with success because money is something that comes and goes. I think that for me, building relationships um, is equally, if not more important. And I think that the relationships that I built pre-pandemic, you know, for the past 25 years um, is what is the reason why I'm still, you know, able to, to flourish right now um, because, when you have good relationships, people want to support you. So I can truly say that I was blessed that when we were able to open back up, my customers came back immediately. So I would say <laughs> that, you know, just you really want to know, um, have your own definition of success. And like I say, for me, success is not necessarily um, how much money I'm making. For me, success is um, being, being able to go to a job that I'm passionate about. Um, it's being able to have the flexibility to be there if my kids need me for something. So for me, that's what determines success. It's not about necessarily the material things or how much money I'm making. So I would say that, you know, you really want to just make sure that you um, have your own definition. And once you have that, then that's gonna kind of help guide you um, with what, you know, you're doing in your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanna piggyback off that. And so have your own definition of success and that's absolutely right. But also your definition of success changes over time. When I first started my business, not, not being literally not being in an all white male dominated um, environment was really important to me, but I had to make money. If I had done one and not the other, I would have been in big trouble for mm. the long term. The other thing I want to uh, remind people is don't, don't depend on other people to co-sign your vision. 
because mm-hmm. you will never get started if you have to have people who agree that this is the right thing for you. When I started my business 20 years ago, I did this elaborate business plan. I rolled it out. I went to a business mentor who was like the best in the business. And he said, don't quit your day job, girl. You are never going to make a dollar. Wow. Wow. And <laughs> if I had listened, and I remember how that felt. I remember it, it hit me so hard when he said that because he had listened to me for uh, weeks, not, it wasn't just one meeting. And he said, don't quit your day job. You're an engineer, you got a good job. You know, just be a good little engineer till you retire. And I internalized that. And over time we tend to internalize negative stuff so that sometimes by the time your ship comes in you can't even get on it because you've built, you've allowed so much stuff to cling on to your, get into your spirit. So Mm -hmm. I want to say, make sure you protect your spirit. Don't internalize Mm -hmm. everything negative that happens to you. Because I went through a period where I was trying to climb back from the recession and I was hurting and bitter. And it really, you have to work yourself out of that. So just don't allow it. Just don't allow it. Get that tribe and make sure you are developing those relationships. Make sure you're offering to help people. All of us have people come to us asking for help, but a lot of the help I've received is because I have offered to help them with something. So when they have something to give, they come back to me Mm -hmm. because I was there for them. Mm -hmm. So don't just find a tribe, be a part of a tribe that actually gives, be givers, not just receivers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would, um, I like to jump in there because um, I wholeheartedly agree with what Zeta was um, saying about measuring your, what you consider your level of success or, you know, how, how you're doing out there. Um, I actually started with eight colors of lip gloss and um, I had that tribe. I always tell my students, my friends that uh, you have to have friends who are smarter than you. Um, and, you know, they're always, well, what do you mean by that? I say, okay, well, you know, Lori is in the wedding planning business. She knows what the brides want. I have no idea what brides want to see or what, what vision they want to have. So, you know, I may bounce things off of her, you know, I would take my colors and, you know, I want the bold, the bright colors, you know, um, guess what, the, the, uh, my friend Michelle, who's the engineer, she's like, okay, we need, we need you to put colors for um, professional, you know, neutral colors, things like that in, we need you to add this or, you know, not that they're, ideas will be solely what you base your decisions off of, but it's a different viewpoint, a different, you know, a, a vantage, um, you know, and then I would have, you know, an, another um, friend who was on my, I call him my board of directors that would say, okay, we need to stop increasing your products. How about we need some mirrors to take along to the events? You know, we can step up you know, the presentation a little bit. Um, And so things like that were really helpful to me as I, you know, came along. And especially um, as far as, you know, telling you, okay, have you read books on presentations or or asking people to um, invest in your company? things of that nature, you know, because if you don't want to invest your own personal money into your own business, then why would somebody else want to do it? Um, So just having that, you know, good team of friends or business people that's going to be honest with you um, and to at least make you think about the advice they're giving. You don't have to, to take it. But to think about it, as, as Ms. Carla said, you know, some people say you should give that up, you know, like, you know, them, that I don't like what you're doing. But, okay, I hear you. Maybe I'll try a little something different and let's see. So, you know, I always had little competitions in the store. What, uh, you know, 
what's the new color y'all like i might have four colors what's gonna be the next color of the month or or something but you know just have your friends along on the ride with you and to me you know as long as they're happy and sending you you know some good praises and for me that's my level of success that they, they're like they go to lipstick late you don't gotta know my name just that i'm like hey so that i think that's very beneficial go ahead kim so i think one common thing that we keep hearing from all of us is giving and service as part of our business Mm -hmm. um, and I will say, and I started off with, you know, us being more than a barber shop, but a community resource. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that is what, why we're still in business today through this pandemic, um, because of those relationships, right? And because of our service in the community and given to the community, they, you know, they wanted to make sure that we survived. So we had individuals coming to us when we were shut down here, we wanna give you some money, apply for this, just fill out this paper. Um, even to the fact of customers who couldn't come get services, they would just send money as if they were getting their services, right? So that is where I hear, you know, we a, a constant theme for us, all of us on here, is that we have our level of success at that service piece plays a huge part into why we are, sustainable and successful where we are. And if I could jump in, I know I'm supposed to be a moderator, but I, you know, I am an entrepreneur. Um, it started off as a side hustle, right? I'm a teacher, as most of you know. Um, and so I went into the wedding business because I'm like, well, I have summers off, so I'll do weddings in the summer. But as we know, the wedding industry has evolved to 12 months a year. But if I could just share just some advice that I was given um, in building my business, and that was to invest in a personal coach. Um, many of you may or may not know, Mimi was my coach. You know, I invested in coaching because there were just some things I just didn't know. She was already an entrepreneur, so she was able to guide me in that. So if you can invest in a, in a coach, then that would be my advice. And then the second is get you some virtual mentors. I heard this on a recent uh, conference I attended and because we're in the world of social media right Facebook Instagram Snapchat Twitter follow those individuals that are at the level of, of, of success you aspire to be right and they become your virtual mentor you know a lot of people are like well how do I find a mentor and they think they have to go out and physically find someone you can follow someone YouTube is another one where, you know, there's a few people on YouTube I follow and that's who I basically base my podcast off mm -hmm. because I'm learning things from those individuals that I'm following. So I just like to, I just wanted to share that in the discussion as well. Christia. I, I just want to echo that about having a coach. I actually have two coaches. One was part of my CEO group, which was like a peer coaching group and she was the facilitator, but um, one coach focuses like on hardcore business strategy, financials, um, growth, that type of thing. And then I have a coach that just kind of helps me with the people and culture issues that impact my business. Because what I've learned as an entrepreneur is people are one of your best investments. If you, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, particularly black entrepreneurs have a difficult time scaling because they become a business of one. And really to get to the next level, you have to make the sacrifice and bring on good people and be yes. very intentional about the culture um, that you have, but like I, like you said, coaching, the best shortcuts are in other people's heads. You can save like years Googling, um, trying to figure out the answers for yourself if you just invest the money in having someone help you who's already done it before. Yes, awesome. Yeah, my, my time with Mimi is just, was worth every penny, <laughs> the investment. I do want to ask, um, actually, Christia and Mimi, we do have a question about your your books that you've written. And the question says, could you tell what you've captured about your journeys in your books? So uh, I can start off. So for me, I wrote, uh, I should have one right here. So this is a tip book and it was self-published and it was really designed as what we call a back of the room sales piece so that people could take the message that I had home. So this was, um, this is actually 
what I call a companion guide to one of the keynotes I deliver. And I'm writing a bigger book now that actually focuses on the topic of swag. Um, but I will say like, the, for me, it was another form of revenue. Um, and I do, this doesn't have as much of my story in it, but my, my fourth book will. Um, but think about from a business standpoint, what additional modes of revenue that are easy. And once you create a book, it's already done and you can continue just to order and send it out to folks as well. And then let me, oh, let me also say this part about Lori. So I've, I've had the pleasure, Lori, and, I, and I've said this to you, she's like probably my favorite client. I probably, she is. <laughs> and, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on a call with her, but she did the work. So when you hire a coach, be prepared to do the work. If you're going to make that investment in yourself, make sure that you're invested in the results that you want to get. And when you hire a coach, make sure that they have a coach. So your coach should have a coach because we all have these blind spots we can't see. And that's what a really great coach will help you do. And I have a, my process is really more of consultive and coaching. So I'm asking you, helping you set that vision, but that vision is so important, but you also want someone who has the experience to help guide you and give you direction and also give you encouragement along the way. And then I'll add one other thing about coaching is accountability. Sometimes when you're the owner of the company, you're so busy holding everyone else accountable, making sure everyone else does what they're supposed to do, that no one is holding you accountable in terms of the big things that need to be worked on, the big strategies um, that need to be accomplished. And so to Mimi's point, make sure your coach has a coach. But like I said, that accountability is often absent. And that's why you see the difference between business owners that get coached versus business owners that do not get coached. Um, in terms of my book, it's called This Is Only a Test, What Breast Cancer Taught Me About Faith, Love, Hair, and Business. And it's not about breast cancer, even though it's in the title, but it's more so about how I built the company, what sacrifices I made, um, and how being kind of a workaholic and not dealing with the trauma and grief that came with losing my mom um, at 17, 60 days before I started Harvard, mm. I think ultimately contributed to my breast cancer diagnosis, not for the, the first time. And so, you know, Long story short, it talks about kind of the sacrifices I made doing the side hustle thing. As someone mentioned, I didn't quit my job because as a black woman, I didn't have the luxury of quitting my job um, to build you know, a multi-million dollar company. And so it just really talks about the importance of slowing down and finding balance um, in your life because yes, making money is great, but also living a long, healthy life without a million doctor's appointments is also um, very important as well. And I put a little link on the side. Um, if you guys want free copies of the electronic version, you can just email Karen at tginatural.com and that's in the chat. I was going to bring that up as far as the chat. Yep. The free copy. Awesome. So ladies, many of you offer your individual services, I wanted to give you an opportunity to share or offer any specials or incentives to the audience who might want to reach out to you after this and patronize your businesses. So I'll give you a few minutes if you'd like to, to offer or I know you've already offered some um, resources for owners, but what about your own businesses? Whoever would like to start. Mm -hmm. I'll start. So um, one of the things I offer to folks are discovery sessions to help you do a deep dive on the vision that you have for your business. I actually started in the speaking industry specifically around like vision boards and Lori talked about being on channel four. All of that started from a vision board and it just kind of grew from there. So I help people during the discovery session, it's free and we'll sit down and do a deep dive and then determine if, if we are fit to work together. So I really help you dive into your sales and marketing side of your business, get clear on who your target market is, and then create the strategies and tactics to help you reach your goals. So feel free to send me a, an email, I'll pop it in the chat, um, but I would love to be able to just connect with you. My uh, office is in Lincoln Park and we are open for patients uh, who need obstetrical and gynecological concerns or have obstetrical or gynecological concerns. I am in the process of writing my first book. I heard there were some ladies here who have written books. Yes. Um, the title of my book is It's a Hot Mess, Tips, Tricks, and Truth for the Menopausal Woman. 
So hopefully that'll be out in the summer. Ooh, can't wait. Yeah, I'm <laughs> excited. Okay, well, Tantra's Cosmetics Beauty Bar, uh, we're located at 18979 Livernois. We have a special um, for viewers. So um, a natural glam uh, makeup session is $40 with the purchase of two lip products. Ooh, okay. Brittany, I know you're booked up coming up in this season, but for those who might be looking for some space to have an upcoming event. Um, yes, yeah, so for the first five women that do reach out to me, I will give you the rose package for the sunflower price. Um, the rose package includes your linen, includes your charger plates, um, it includes the, the chair covers, all of, the, all of that jazz. All you really have to come is with your centerpieces for the sunflower price. And the sunflower is just your tables and chairs. I'll put um, my website in the chat so you can go there you can book it and it's going to ask you like for your little message or anything that you have to say and all you have to say is put in old grove and then i'll know awesome and zeta i know has been contacted if um those of you that didn't know um zeta has done embroidery items for old grove in the past and we are preparing again to offer Oak Grove apparel. So I know Zeta's already been contacted by one of our trustees. Um, so be looking forward for Oak Grove members for that apparel that's gonna come courtesy of Stitchworks. It's funny because we never call it Sti Stitchworks. We always say call Zeta, call Zeta. <laughs> so we forget the business is even called Stitchworks, but she does quality work. So Thank you for that. And Janeiro, I know you're in California, but you know I follow you on social media. So you also give tips. So even though you may not be able to offer a service or anything mm -hmm. to viewers, definitely you know follow you would be my suggestion for those oh, yeah. la lash tips for those of us that invest in those. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and even we may have some California people on, but um, yeah, so definitely follow us for anything beauty. So yeah, we do, do give lash tips. We give tips on makeup and stuff on social media. And um, yeah, so anything, all things, we're all things beauty at the OC Lash Loft and we're located in Irvine, California. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Carla. Yeah, so um I was going to say, no matter where you are, don't forget to call your local utility because 100% of utilities right now, if you call them, they will give you free LED light bulbs, Wi-Fi, thermostats, uh, pipe wrap shower heads, things that for no, for zero, will actually start helping you save energy and save money. And that is on your home, but also if you own a, a building, or if, even if you rent a building, it's, uh, they're mandated by the Public Service Commission. So I urge you all, people who are really, one of the things we laugh about all the time is we have people from really affluent, wealthy communities and they're like, hey, I hear you have $500 worth of free stuff. Can you come to my house and do it? And we have to work really, really hard to get people from our community to take us up on, on these offers and there's no downside. So if you're DTE, if you're in DTE service territory, I'm actually going to give you a number. And that number is 866-796-0512, or you can go on their website. And no matter, again, who your utility is, please reach out because, because energy is a burden. The cost of energy is a burden. So anything you can do to control it. And uh, Dr. Barbara, I'm going to be reaching out. I'm probably going to be reaching out to five people on this call because it really mm -hmm. is important that we support that we support each other. Amen. I agree. I agree. Can you give that phone number again for DTE, please, Carla? Uh, 866. It's 866-796-0512. Thank you. And, and we're going to make all of these resources available as well um, to everyone after this. Um, we'll make sure it goes into our weekly constant contacts. So viewers, hopefully you're already subscribed to the church's constant contact, and we will provide a link to everyone's businesses, contact information and the resources and the book links and everything too. Um, Kim, I just wanted to touch on, on your business for a minute. 
and say that, what about someone who's interested? Because, you know, there are entrepreneurs out there that are interested in real estate. And for those who might be interested in investing in commercial or residential real estate, are there any tips that you can provide for someone that's going that route? So this is where, um, you know, definitely the area of getting a coach, right? Because this was mm-hmm. that this was not a business that um, we had the we were the subject matter experts in, but then we learned and we became the subject matter experts in commercial um, real estate because. One of our locations, we actually, you know, rent and the other one we own. So um, I would definitely um, say get with someone who is in commercial real estate to okay. get started um, and to learn about that business, um, because obviously it can be very lucrative, especially that's another good thing coming out of the pandemic, right? The big, um, the money that's going to be poured into um, transportation and infrastructure, Um, Mm -hmm. So that is the time to, um, you know, one of the things is, you know, owning your own property um, is also truly um, a benefit when you do try to get loans or or capital, right, for your, um, to further capital for your business. So that's what I would say is definitely start with someone who is in that industry to learn from them. Outstanding. Thank you. So we have a couple questions in the chat or in the Q&A. So Dr. Hannah, The pandemic has created so many changes, the stress level of women, especially mothers. What is one of the most significant changes you feel this has created in women's healthcare? Um, Mm -hmm. I would say for most patients just who have kids, their interaction with the kids Um, trying to navigate hybrid Mm -hmm. learning, trying to navigate um, the computer system. Sometimes the child has to be left at home with maybe an older relative who doesn't know the computer system well. And then the kids, as a result of that, aren't able to get online and get their learning So I would have to say that that's probably one of the biggest stressors that I see of um, my patients. Mm -hmm. Um, On the flip side, the quarantine has done some things that help to boost my business. Uh, People are at home and have nothing to do but make babies. So we (laughs) expecting that our numbers are gonna go up for these these pregnant ladies now. Wow. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. <laughs> Quarantine babies. It's all the Quarantine news. Babies. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's all it. right. So we have a question that actually, Jackie, you might need to answer. What do we do if we aren't subscribed to the church's constant contact? Will we, will you post a video on Facebook? How do we watch the replay? Um, I have been recording, so I possibly can send it to you to upload on the church's YouTube channel. Um, but constant contact, I think you need to access. Okay. I mean to answer, sorry. Okay. Um, yes, we will post it as Lori said. Um, to get um, on our mailing list for constant contact, you can go to the church's website, which is of course www.oakgroveame.org, and you can sign up there. Or you may also send me an email to J Lawson, L A W S O N at oakgroveame.org. So either way, send it to me, or we encourage you to go to the website because there's a lot of good information about what's going on at Oak Grove as well. Yes, thank you. Um, So someone else asked, how will we be able to access the resources? So again, give us a, to the end of the day today, I'd like to just, I've been writing things down and what we'll do, Katrina, Jackie and I have been, we'll combine our notes and then we will make sure to have those resources available to you through the church's um, constant contact. So the, oh, go ahead. I just wanted to add to that. The constant contact goes out on a Friday. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna take us a little while to get all of this together. But what Lori and I uh, and Katrina will work to do is to try to get this up on YouTube later today. So in case you want to share the link with your friends or other business owners, you can do so. 
uh, but it is gonna take us a little while uh, to the next mailing, uh, unless we can do a special mailing next week. But Lori and Katrina and I'll talk about that. All right. Next question is what advice, I guess this is to anyone, what advice would you share with young women, high schoolers, college, about considering entrepreneurship as an option for them? This is particular, this is actually something I'm looking at long term. Um, again, being a high school educator um, and seeing a lot, I mean, Brittany was a former student of mine, but I've actually looked into starting a foundation for those young women who actually want to, a lot of the kids are doing side hustles in college, right? Whether they're doing hair, um, doing braids, they're doing nails. And so I'm looking into starting a foundation that would give them seed money to actually start a side hustle um, when they do matriculate uh, to college. So I'm, I'm so inspired by a lot of my former students like Brittany um, who have gone off and instead of entering just the traditional work um, place, they've gone off and started their own businesses, my son included. So um, that's one thing that I would say is for them, well, the advice would be for them, well, that wasn't really advice, but that's just something I'm looking for um, into. But Brittany, you got some advice? <laughs> um, so of course, something else that I do, I am a, a dance coach. Um, so mm -hmm. some of my babies, they'll always kind of tell me, oh, hey, I'm interested in doing here. Or, hey, I'm interested in doing that. Actually, one of my former captains, we were getting ready for her to go to Alabama State. I was getting her ready for auditions, but hair was her real passion. And when I was younger, people always used to tell me, you know, you have to go to college, make sure you go to college. You know, you need your degree, you have to get a degree, you know, and that's just not the way for everyone. So one thing that I will say, a word of advice is to have confidence in yourself and in your work and what you want to do. And no matter what someone else says to you or what advice they have for you and where you should go, you need to follow your own path and not what someone else wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Whoever and wants to go next. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. All right. Um, so my advice is um, I am... Of course, I'm an educator, so um, I believe in uh, going to college and all of that. So I believe in the, this term that um, I've been hearing a lot of called uh, entrepreneurs. So people who use their investment from their real job mm -hmm. or their career job to pay for their dream jobs. Um, so um, my daughter... Um, uh, has her degree in supply chain and e-commerce and she took the knowledge that she gained from that and she started her own skincare line. Um, she has always loved tea, drink tea, make tea, put tea in lotion, all of that and just everything that you can do with tea, put it in, bake with tea and so she started a um, a skincare line using tea, her passion, her while she works her regular job. And um, yes, the end goal is to one day just to um, run Tea Had Me. But in the meantime, she's still making money doing something that she likes while she's investing in something that she loves. So that would be my advice that you can do both things. Um, you can go to college, um, you know, learn those business techniques there, uh, you know, social media skills, whatever it is, and, um, you know, and have your dream with your hustle. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah, I agree. And the, the, the advice I would give is connect yourself with someone who knows what they're doing because, mistakes become painful over time. And we don't talk enough about the amount of pain that's in the entrepreneurial community while we're trying to figure it out. So minimize your pain by taking advantage of resources that are already out here. There is a, it sounds square, but junior achievement is still in a lot of high schools and it's a, an incredible place to learn about business. But even, um, and again, I talk about Detroit a lot because that's my base. 
but Tech Town, Prosperous, the Build Institute, there are numbers of, they call themselves BSOs, business serving organizations. We go into business because we think we're good at something, but we're not necessarily good at business. We're good at our craft or our skills. And we waste a lot of time and money and go through a lot of unnecessary stuff sometimes by not taking advantage of people who have uh, of, of the resources that are out there. So do your homework and please take advantage of people who are literally being paid and funded and sponsored to help you start your businesses. Yes, go ahead, Mimi. Um, so I just wanna piggyback, Carla and I are like in sync with each other. Mm-hmm. One of the areas that I see, and I see this in some of my coaching clients is you gotta get the base business foundation. So do you understand finance? You understand your profit and loss statement. Do you even know what a PL is? How are you invoicing? Do you know what cash flow is? Cash flow is a real deal when you go into business for yourself, let me tell you. <laughs> and if I could give any advice to a high schooler who's interested, is definitely explore that and encourage them. But can they start getting the education now to get some of those base business mm-hmm. uh, fundamentals? So uh, to Carlos, I'm a graduate of the Build Institute, and they take you from the start of developing a business plan and, and creating a marketing strategy all the way through the production of whatever product or service that you're delivering to the marketplace. So if you can find um, programs that even get you started in that space, that's helpful. I know Oakland County, they do it once a month. They have uh, different mini sessions that are free that you can attend, creating a business plan, doing marketing stuff, or even like um, Schoolcraft College and OCC, they offer their community development programs. Anything that you feel like, like you might know your business or product or service very well, but do you know how to operate a business where you can stay in business? Yes. Uh, Lori, I wanted to ask a question um, with our young people. Are we still um, offering like shadow programs where our young people can shadow uh different you know career uh professionals do we still have those we do they come up with our community um partners in the district um junior achievement is still very active i I partner with junior achievement quite a bit um so yes they still exist Um, but it's all about you know asking you know we have to encourage our students as well to ask Um, Sometimes they think that all the answers are on social media and that they can find out everything by Googling, Um, but we have to encourage our kids to to really speak up. Um, We have a career fair that we normally do every year at the school and we'll bring individuals in. And that's another thing that I would encourage students to do as well is to seek out um, individuals. You'd be surprised that you can communicate with them via social media on LinkedIn even. Um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a very untapped resource. LinkedIn mm-hmm. is a, um, it, people used to think it was a network, a professional social, uh, social media, but it's actually like a Google. It's, it's, a, it's a resource. You search for what you're looking for and those individuals will come up uh, via what you're searching for. So we have another question. It's what advice would you give to a business owner that has begun to question their passion for their business? Hmm. So a business owner that has begun to question their passion for their business. I'd say pay attention. You know, some if you if passion is important again it depends on what your driver is and if passion is a driver for you and you're questioning it then pay attention and explore you know why has your passion why is your passion changing is it just harder is it taking longer what is driving you know what is driving uh, that question and sometimes when we're really invested in something our businesses are our babies Mm -hmm. And it's hard. If you talk to any of these business owners about quitting or stopping, (laughs) they will fight you. Okay, (laughs) They will fight you. So we just take this ownership of our business and there are businesses have life cycles, right? And sometimes they're like businesses in just like every other thing ends. And sometimes you really have to be realistic about what is your end game? What is your exit plan? They may need to consider what their exit strategy is and how they can parlay it to where it's still beneficial and not hurtful to their credit score, to their livelihood and other things. But I think it's, it's fair. Yes. 
I know we and have I would a encourage oh, them. Go I ahead. Was just gonna say I would encourage them to ask the hard questions. Why are they uh, doubting what they're doing at that moment? Uh, is there something else they should be doing? Ask, don't be afraid to ask yourself the hard questions and be introspective and just really tune into yourself and see what makes you feel excited and what you're not excited about. And then just follow your passion, follow your dream. We and have, a, oh, go ahead, Nadanya. I just wanted to say, um, go back to what Zeta said earlier. Is it your passion, your level of your passion for it based on your level of success or what other people might find success? Is your passion dwindling because you're not making the amount of money that you anticipated making um, or um, maybe social factors or family factors? You know, what exactly is making that uh, passion uh, dwindle? Mm -hmm. And then um, just kind of think about why <laughs> was it your passion? Mm. You know, same thing um, <laughs> for me, I am retiring in June from education, which has been my passion for so long, but I'm really more passionate about this lip gloss right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, you know, no, I don't make as much money selling lip gloss as I did working at a school, which is not much money either, but this is just where my passion is. So you have to really think if your passion is about money, then maybe you might want to reconsider what your passion is. Mm -hmm. How can we keep these conversations going? I mean, this, again, this was, mm -hmm. a rich, this was, the idea was birthed from Katrina um, but it's, it's very rare that you get women entrepreneurs together like this. I mean, you can attend conferences, even virtually, you know, some are paid, some are free. Um, but how can we continue these types of conversations? Just do it. <laughs> Just, yeah. Let's put it on the calendar and invite a different set of entrepreneurs. Right. Just keep inviting us. We'll yeah. come. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, but I mean, even, yes, go ahead. Janelle. I was going to say, but even on a personal level, like I, we created, or I created like a little group of entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs that I, that I know, and we get together. Well, not, we haven't gotten together in a year now because of the pandemic, but we'll still, you know, keep in contact and we would get together monthly just to talk about different things. Um, and we're in different industries, but just to talk about, for example, like payroll or, you know, mm -hmm. taxes or who do you use as your accountant? So I think that that's important too, to just stay connected. Yes. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, I think with the exception of maybe Zeta, all of you are on some type of social media where folks can go out and follow. No shade Zeta at all. <laughs> but um, would you all please share the social media accounts that individuals can, and again, we'll put this in our resources as well, but I just wanna have it recorded. Um, what's your social media account so individuals can go out and follow you um, after this is over. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start with um, Nadanya, you wanna give us your social media? Facebook, Instagram. So my Instagram is Tauntus Cosmetics. My Facebook is Tauntus Cosmetics. It's also Tauntus Cosmetics Beauty Bar. And most of my posting is on Nadanya Muslim. Okay. Brittany, how do we reach out to book Just Blossom Studio? So you guys can go directly to the website to actually book, but um, if you have an Instagram, it's Just Blossom, and I believe it might be a underscore. So it's Just Blossom and underscore afterwards. Um, I always respond if you DM. I post, you know, motivational things on there, or if I did some decorations, I might post that. Uh, we have a boot camp class here that's on Mondays from 7 to 8 p.m. On Wednesdays, there's a Blooms, it's Beautiful Ladies Overcoming Obstacles, Mastering Spirituality. That's a mentoring program for young women. That's every other Wednesday. So I just keep you guys updated on Instagram and on Facebook. Facebook is just Blossom. If you type it in, it should pop up. Awesome. And Zeta will share your website, 
stitchworksemb.com, right? That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. All right. Kim, what about you? Can we follow AK Gathers or do we follow you? So follow AG's Barbershop. Okay. And all of our, um, we post there on um, all of our social media, okay. um, as well as our website is AG's at agsbarbershop.com. .com, gotcha. Dr. Bobby? So my new website is going to be launched within the next couple of weeks. Okay. And that's going to be um, Dr. Barbara Hanna at Dr. Bobby OB Gen. So if you follow that on Facebook, it should be the same thing on Instagram and Twitter, Dr. Barbara Hanna at Dr. Bobby OB Gen. And then look forward to the website. And we're looking forward to the book too. And the book, yeah. For those of us that are 50 and over. Oh, I, I have an editor who's just been very kind right now, but I think if I don't get that book in real soon, I'm gonna be in trouble. Okay. All right. Carla? I'm, uh, my Facebook is WM Energy. I mean, I'm sorry, my website is WMEnergy.com and just Walker Miller Energy Services on on uh, on Facebook. Yes. Christia? Uh, on Instagram, we're TGI Natural. On Facebook, we're TGI Natural. And you can follow me at TGI and CEO. I'm on like LinkedIn, Facebook, um, and Instagram. Yes. You got a new product that just well popped up when I went to the um, website last evening too. So excited! Yes, Janero. Uh oh, won't happen. Okay, um, on Instagram, I'm the underscore OC underscore Lash Loft, and then Facebook is also the OC Lash Loft, and um, the website is the OC Lash Loft dot com. Dot com. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ladies, thank you so much. This has been amazing. I mean, thank I've just you. been moderating, but it's just been so informative. I got a, a sheet full of notes for just myself. And I just love that you all, we reached out, you guys said yes. Um, some of you had conflicts, but you were able to just fit us in. And so I know I might be speaking ahead of Katrina, but I am just so thankful. And I hope that we can continue these types of conversations in the very, very near future. And um, I'll be looking myself to patronize Janeiro. You know, my brother lives in California. So, I I'll, know. Be, <laughs> so I'll be out to see you as soon as this travel restriction is lifted. And mm -hmm. just thank you for joining us. I know you're in Cali, Kim, you're in Phoenix. So thank you so much. And Christia, you're in Chicago. I don't know. I don't know why I thought you were in, I don't know why I thought you were in Michigan, but you're in Chicago. So you're our behind as well. Hi. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Katrina, for allowing me this opportunity to just organize and, and moderate this conversation. Thank you. Did Lori? You, yes. Can you please put your information in? Right. Oh, in the, yes, I will make it a part of uh, the resources as well. I sure will. Yes, thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, Lori, may I make a, one, one more of comment? Course. I would of be course. remiss if I didn't mention, we've mentioned JA, a, a junior achievement, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I'm being honored as the Southeast Michigan laureate for yes, you junior are. achievement. Yes. And this is the first time that two women have received this honor. It's never, awesome. never been given to yeah. two women. And I say that because we, we've talked about the importance and the relevance of junior achievement. But I want to thank you all because platforms are important. So mm -hmm. I thank you, Oak Grove and Lori and, and Reverend, because uh, just having a voice is really, really important for us. So yes, absolutely. yes. Yes, I knew that, Carla, because um, I'm always invited to attend the celebration. So, yes, congratulations on that. It's so, a fundraiser. So, yes, it is. <laughs> it is. So, I would like to say um, if you are looking for an intern, we're just talking about uh, interns and shadowing um, Detroit Public Schools, our hiring Detroit Public School students for internship program. So if you have a business that you would like um, an internship with, contact Arese, A-R-E-S-E -E dot Robinson, R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N at DetroitK12.org. 
and Detroit Public Schools is, um, they will be paying those interns, so you do not have to pay, um, but they will be learning virtually or working virtually for you. Um, so that is a great opportunity to help yourself and um, definitely, most importantly, help the students of Detroit Public Schools. So uh, that's right on time because I'm looking to hire some student interns to help with my weddings this year. Look at God. Mm -hmm. Well, they these students will be working virtually. That's unless fine. The numbers go down. Yes. And so Detroit will pay them. So you don't have to hire them. The school will pay them. Outstanding. But um, for someone like me who is not social media savvy, except right. on Facebook. I know nothing about the Instagram. I just have it. Either. They see Zeta, you and me, they can help you. Yes. These okay. kids know how to do it. Yes. Right. Um, and so they are offering um, these free interns. So contact Arise. She has been looking for businesses, even um, uh, con um, what do you call the people? Um, construction, the um, um, accountants, so all different types of businesses, and I'm sure they do not have any wedding directors. So, mm -hmm. hey, awesome! It's, it's something there for all of us to benefit from. Absolutely. Thank you, Katrina. I will turn it over to you. Well, uh, thank you, is Pastor back? She is not. I just want to say um, this has been a true blessing. I mean, really. Um, I'm just, I'm just really, just really overjoyed. Um, this was just a vision that God gave us. Normally this would be the missionaries weekend, our celebratory weekend. We would be having a prayer breakfast and, uh, worship with a guest speaker, but God took us in another direction. And I Amen. am so grateful mm -hmm. for that. And, uh, my daughter, that's my oldest daughter is Kim Gathers, uh, who yes. left me, got me to Detroit and then left me and went to Phoenix. <laughs> but anyway, that's okay. I'm, I'm very proud of her. And then our youngest, uh, my youngest daughter who's with her in Phoenix, uh, just graduated from Jackson state university in Jackson, Mississippi. She's now exploring, uh, entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. Kim's business is going to help her to start mm -hmm. um, her own business. So I, you know, it's, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. And um, I am very grateful. And I know that everyone on here has benefited greatly. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to make it um, available to uh, more people. Yes. So the pastor is not on here. Um, so I, if, if my daughter, Kim, Kim, can you give us a closing prayer? Anything else <laughs> for the order? My, can you do that? And um, I thank you all. Um, I hope Lori has all of your information, your mailing information. We do want to send you uh, just a token of love uh, from the Missionary Society in Oak Grove. So um, hopefully Lori has everyone's contact information. But again, thank you and God bless you all. And um, I'm looking forward to again, um, doing this again. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Kim. Any else, no. Lori or Jackie or anyone else? No, I just want to thank you, Katrina, for mm -hmm. allowing me to be a part of this. And Lori, you are it. One of the comments that Alethea wrote is that you are up there with Oprah. Yes. So oh. we thank you. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, it, it's there. So Excellent. we thank, thank you, you. Um, for being, because there's no one else at Oak Grove that could handle it the way that you did. So, and Thank all you. the ladies, the friendships, the yeah. new products we get to buy, all of the connections that have been made, it's a blessing from God. Amen. Amen. Okay, Kim. So, <laughs> you know, I was raised by the missionaries. So, you know, that's be oh so ready, right? So that's how you get violent told. Um, so <laughs> if we can uh, close out in prayer. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to once again serve. We thank you for the vision um, that you uh, cast into the Nancy Marsh Missionary Society. Lord, we thank you for all the entrepreneurs and the sisters who are represented here, Lord God. Thank you for 
allowing them to share their gifts, Lord God. Thank you for allowing them to bless others, Lord God. And Lord God, we just thank you for um, Pastor Rudolph for um, allowing this vision and, and the seed that was planted to go forth. We, we ask that you continue to bless all the ladies and anyone from all across the country that are um, on this webinar. And we hope that they receive something today, Lord God. And again, Lord God, we just thank you for um, your continued blessings upon us. We ask that you continue to bless all the businesses, Lord God, those that are in existence, Lord God, and those that are being birthed out of this, Lord God. Yes, so yes. Lord God, we're claiming right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that although the pandemic uh, came and tried to shut us down, Lord God, Lord God, we know that um, we have heard, Lord God, the prosperity, Lord God, that has been bestowed, Lord God, and what has been birthed out of it. So Lord God, we thank you again for all these blessings, and we ask that you continue to lead and guide us. These we ask in your precious son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory 